Thank you, thank you, Marisol, for your sharing. And you know, it's it's good to sometimes hear also the stories of our cell leaders. Because most of the time, the stories that we hear and we listen to are the stories of many cell members. And as a cell leader, we always listen. Amen. And they would seldom know also our own story and the struggle that we have. As a cell leader, you are expected to listen, understand, wait, be patient, always loving, always understanding. But behind all those expectations, behind all the responsibilities that we have, you know, not everyone would see how we feel. And kung ano din po yung struggles na meron po tayo. And we know as a cell leader, we understand the feeling. We understand the struggle. And this is how, how one would really describe God's sacrifice and Jesus' sacrifice in our lives. And we are always expected to die on ourselves. Amen? Para i-sacrifice ang maraming bagay sa ating buhay. But even on these struggles and challenges, we continue to persist in loving. Many times, we will be misunderstood. We will be misjudged. They will always get jealous. Kung ano yung attention, the measure. Our cell members will always measure how much we love them. How much we love them less or more as compared to others. And, and many times, they will misunderstand who we are. Amen? But sabi nga po ni, ni Maricel, we persist. We continue and we embrace them continually. Not because we can. Amen? Because we're also human. Amen? Not because we are able. Pero sabi nga ni Maricel, He will always turn dun sa love ng Panginoon. Because seeing how God never fails to love her too, despite yung kanyang mga kakulangan, despite all the weaknesses, despite all the shortcomings, God continually used her and loved her. Amen? Kaya naman po, dun po siya nanguhugot. That's where he, she takes the love that she can give to her cell members. And the same is true in our daily lives. Amen? As humans, we, are also, we also get hurt. We also expect something from people. And somehow, yung pagmamahal, yung love natin is not commensurate of the way we love them. And some way, somehow we get hurt, even in relationship, husband and wife, even in the ministry, even cell leaders and cell members. There is these things that comes along the way, but we continue to love and persist. Amen? Because this is the love that God wants to see to each one of us. Amen? And we believe that yung love po ni Marisol, it is not the love that comes from her. It is the love that comes from the Lord. Because yung love po natin, it always have limits. It always have measurement. Ganyan pinapakita mo sa akin, ha? Sige. Narinig ko nga. Kung, kung attitude ka, attitude din ako. Di ba? We have that kind of, of, of mindset in our lives. If you're not kind enough, I will not also be kind enough. And in the world, this is the principle. The world is always teaching us. In the measure that is given to you by the world, it's the same measure that we give. But somehow the Bible tells us that love has no measurement. Love has no boundaries. And love comes with sacrifice. Amen? And this is the kind of love that Jesus has exemplified even from the very beginning. Amen? And this is this love that God wants us to have as we end our series today in the book of Songs of Solomon. Amen? I hope ilan po sa atin naka-perfect ng series natin. Ba? Parang isa lang. <laughs> of course, I know many of you ay natapos natin at matatapos nating araw na ito ang series ng Songs of Solomon. And so, I want you to prepare your hearts to fully receive yung fullness ng anointing and the message of the Songs of Solomon. So today, let us open our Bibles in chapter 8, Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5, down to verse 14. Okay, this is the last series. So I hope that we will receive 
kung ano man yung hindi po natin na-receive. And today, I entitled this chapter, The Unquenchable Seal of the Warrior Bride. Amen? The Unquenchable Seal of the Warrior Bride. In the last few weeks, we saw yung journey po ng bride. We saw before she became a warrior bride, she was once, she was once like many of us when we did not know Jesus. Amen? She was full of insecurity. She was full of a lot of negative thoughts. She has a lot of self-condemnation, self-accusation, and saying that she's not worthy of the love of God. Amen? But then we see that in, his, in her journey, God was with her. And God has been calling. The groom has been calling for the bride. Amen? Even if the bride did not believe enough, yung groom, even the bride doubts even herself. If she is lovable, is she worthy to be loved? She has all these thoughts and foxes in her heart and in her mind, but the groom persists. Amen? The groom never gives up, and he continually calls for the bride to come and meet him, to see him. And many times, the bride missed the perfect timing. When the bride decided to begin to believe fully on the groom, the groom was gone. And many times, this cycle happened. Amen? It happened. And it just mirrors our lives. The sometimes, po nagmimit yung gusto po natin. Sometimes, we break up. Sometimes, we are good at each other. Sometimes we have misunderstanding. Amen? But just like the love of the groom, the groom persisted in love, continued to call and believe. The bride, even in the times of the wilderness, in the times of the darkness po ng bride, even in the times po that the bride has a lot of foxes. Again, what are the foxes? These are doubts, unbelief, the fears, marahil sinabi po ng bride, ah, why, bakit? When I became a Christian, there's a lot of boundaries, there's a lot of limitations. When I was not a Christian, I can do whatever I want. Have you ever had that thought? Simula nang naging Kristiyano ako, ang daming persecution. There's a lot of pressures in the world. Before, I was, I just go along with the world. Whatever the world does, I can do it. No one judge me. No one will speak. No one will prune me. No one will teach me about it. And it's okay to go with the flow, but when we become to be a Christian, you begin to have your cell leader, and your cell leader begins to speak. Anak, oh, alam mo to, ha? This is, they start to guide us. They start to give us limitations on things that we have to do. And it's not easy. Amen? It is not easy. In the beginning, we find it, ah, grabe ka naman, you don't love me. Kasi ang dami mong pinapagawa sa akin. You have a lot of boundaries, you have a lot of things you want and you expect me to do. And somehow, even the way we see God in giving us the Ten Commandments, we begin to judge God. Lord, if you love me, why? There's so many rules. Nung bata tayo, have you remembered? Nay, pagmahal mo ako. Meron na, I, I saw something, a viral video sa Facebook. The child is having this argument with the mother. Sabi niya, Ma, di ba mahal mo ako? Oo, bigyan mo na. Ano, let me, allow me to watch the cell phone. Pero sinasabi nung nanay, no, you, you're done with your time limit. But the, the child keeps on saying, I thought you love me. Please allow me to watch. But the mother always say, yes, that's why I love you. That's why I don't allow you to watch. Because you've been watching for a long time now. And many times, ganito din yung how our attitude towards God and our, the, the bride's attitude towards the groom. Many times, hindi po sila nagkakaayon. Many times po, the, the other one likes the other one. Yung asawa natin, iba ang gusto. Hindi po tayo nagmimit in the middle. And this is how we miss Sometimes. But you see, the love of the groom persisted. His love is not because the bride is perfect, 
But because the love of the groom is a committed love. It's a persisting and a strong love. Ano pong nangyari doon? Because of the love of the groom, the bride was willing to also fight the battle. The bride is also willing to meet the groom in the middle. And he has to go and fight. And along the fight, the bride rise up to be a warrior bride. It changed. It transformed the bride. He's not, he's, she's no longer just a bride. But she began to be a fierce bride. A bride that can rise up and also face the struggles, her own struggles. And the bride did not just become a fighting bride, but the bride matures. Amen? And she began to realize at the end, even if I don't feel the groom, even if I don't see that as if he's gone, is here, I still love him. He is mine and I am his. I am his and he is mine. And this is the faith. Yung love po nung bride, dati it was full of unbelief. It was full of fears. The bride transformed into with a love that has so much faith. And this love matures to become tree of life. And nung naging nagmature po yung bride, the groom, the more the groom is attracted to the bride. Amen? The more that the groom was in love with the bride. Amen? Because the bride matures. She matures. And because of this, yung relationship po nila na fully restored and it broke the curse. And what is the curse? I'm just giving you a conclusion of all the five songs. At the end, they broke the, the curse together. In Genesis chapter 3, 16, it says, what is the curse of women? The women's curse is that their desire will be for their husband. That's why I was saying last week, nagiging CIA, nagiging agent ang mga babae. Pag nawala lang sa mata nila yung kanilang mga partner, oh, and dami. They have a lot of thoughts. They have a lot of foxes. They have a lot of kwento. Sa ating mga, oh, sana kaya yun naku, parang we begin to call people. Nagiging kwan po tayo. Ang tawag doon yung wala po tayong security. Nabubuwang tayo. O oh, bakit iba amoy ng ganito? Di ba? We have, bakit saan ka? Bakit yung, yung GPS mo iba pinuntahan? Di ba dapat in, after the time, nandito ka na sa bahay, tawagan na lahat. And this is our curse as ladies. And guys, understand, this is the curse of ladies. It's not because we love them so much. But it is a curse. And it's written in Genesis. That sometimes, even no matter how we love our husbands, our lo we love our partners or vice versa, the other partner will not fully also give their love. And we always chase after love. We always chase our partners because we love them. But there is a curse that brings and, and keeps us apart together. But then when the groom, yung love po ng groom fills the bride, and the bride also matures, we, the bride of God, we are the church, we also mature, the curse is being broken. What happens? Hindi mo na kailangang i-chase ang love. Because the love of God begins to fill us. You no longer have po yung pagmamahal na unreciprocated because you know you are satisfied. You are contented with the love of God. And so that's why we no longer have to live na yung, yung partner po natin ang mundo natin. Like we live like everything about us is about our partner. And so what happens, we lose even our own identity. Even among husband and wife, boyfriend and, and girlfriends, we have this Inter the dependence, over-dependence. If the wife or the husband is gone, the wife cannot function. If the wife is gone, yung lalaki hindi rin po niya alam ang gagawin niya. And sometimes it is because of our lack of security. Yung unsatisfied love. Kaya minsan hindi po natin nakikita yung partner natin. We, all, we don't feel the love. 
But you see, last week we understand the love that we have for each other, it is not just bound by yung physical na magkasama kayo palagi. That it's not just about the flesh or the lust that we have, but it broke you. It goes deeper and deeper. At ito po yung love ng Panginoon. And it is a love that cannot be quenched by anything. We grow all together. Wala na yung magandang mata. Wala na yung magandang hubog ng katawan. But we still love each other. You begin to see the real them. Dati mabait sila nung girlfriends. Nagsipag-asawa o. Oh. Diba? There's, there's so much change. And even there's a lot of pressures from the world. There are a lot of thoughts from the world. There are a lot of principles that the world begins to plant in our lives that somehow affects our relationship. And sometimes this is the reason why our love do not persist. But see, the love of God is a love that we need in every relationship. And we are ending this series in this unquenchable seal of the warrior bride. Did you know that as a warrior bride, we have an unquenchable seal? What is this unquenchable seal? Let us all read in Songs verse 5 down to the last verse. Sabi po dito, Who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Under the apple tree I rouse you, there your mother conceived you, there she who was in labor gave you birth. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death, its jealousy and yielding as a grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame, many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away if one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it would be utterly scorned. We have a little sister and her breasts are not yet grown. What shall we do for our sister on the day she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build towers of silver on her. If she is a door, we will enclose her with panels of cedar. I am a mole, says the bride, and my breasts are like towers. Thus, I have become in his eyes like one bringing contentment. Solomon had a vineyard in Baal Hamon. He let out his vineyard to tenants. Each has to bring for its fruit a thousand shekels of silver. But my own vineyard is mine to give. The thousand shekels are for you, Solomon, and two hundred are for those who tends its fruit. You who dwell in the gardens with friends in attendance, let me hear your voice. Come away, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or like a young stag on the spice-laden mountains. Now, I want to, first point, is that we need to receive the fiery seal of love. There is a seal. Yung love po natin, it's not just the love that comes from the world, but it has been sealed with a seal. And this seal comes with that unquenchable fire. Amen? Yan po yung sinasabi sa chapter 8. And what? how do we say this? In verse 8, we see, there's the friends. These are the people's testimony. Sabi po dito, who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Paano na po nila nakita? They're no longer seeing the bride alone. In the beginning, they just see the bride. Sometimes they see the groom, but they never were seen together. But in the last point, in the last part of the psalm, finally, nagtakpo ang dalawa. And the people see the renewal of their relationship. Hindi na po sila naghahanapan. Hindi na po sila, ano yun, nag-iiba yung direction nilang dalawa. But they saw them together. And what did they saw? They're the bride leaning on her groom. Leaning on her groom. The bride is no longer like fighting. The, the bride is no longer on her own. Nor the groom on his own. But they are one together. And the bride, 
is leaning on the groom. That means he entrusted fully. He tr she trusted fully on the groom. Yung complete reliance po niya. There is that peace on the bride. Amen? And the people are testifying. This is what the people saw. Oh, the bride. Hindi na po siya nagahanap. She is already leaning on the groom. Amen? At nakita po niya, sabi din po ng Sabi din po ng groom is that under the apple tree I arose you, there your mother conceived you, there she who was in labor gave you birth. Sabi po ng groom, I roused you even on the apple tree, on the time you were being born. So that means the groom, even from the very beginning, did not leave the bride. Even when she was about to be born, the groom was there. Seeing the bride, waiting for the bride, waiting for the bride to bloom and to rise up. Amen? So that means even from the very beginning, the groom is saying, I did not leave you. Instead, I was with you, I nurtured you, I grow you so that you can mature to become a tree of life. And in every generation that comes from you, I will be with them. Amen? And this is the groom because the groom is God himself in our lives. Yun po yung, yung sinasabi po ng groom sa bride. And he is affirming the bride that I was with you since the beginning. And so the bride continued to follow the groom also. And what is the response of the bride? Uh, and, and, and the groom also says, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. Do you know what's a seal? A seal we have, in the old times, a seal comes with a signet ring. Alam niyo po si Haman? Si Haman, gustong gusto niya ng signet ring. Amen? The seal of the king. Because the seal comes with power. The seal comes with authority. If you have the seal of the king, same lang kayo ng king. If you have the seal, it means you have that power and position. And you see, sabi po dito, place me, says the groom to the bride, place me like a seal over your heart. That means yung love is sealed by the seal of God. And what is this seal? Sabi po dito, for love is a strong, verse 6, for love is as strong as death, its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. The seal is on fire. It, has, it, it doesn't just have authority and power, but it has the, he has the fire. And we know that fire has the ability to consume. Amen? Whatever comes along the way, tutupukin po ng Apoy. Amen? At ang hirap nga pong i-quench ito, lalo na po pag umalab na po siya. And this is the seal na sinasabi po in the book of Song of Solomon. The seal of the fiery flame of God. And this is what? This is the love of God. What is this unquenchable seal? It is the love of God. It is a love that is unstoppable. It is a love na kahit ano pong nasa harapan niya, it can consume anything. At alam niyo po, pag may fire, kahit ilang tubig, lalo na pag na, napakalaki nung, nung fire, it cannot be quenched. And this is how God described this seal that is in us. That we need to place in our heart and in our arm. It is as strong as death. What is stronger than death? We cannot even stop death. Amen? But the seal that comes with the love of God, it is as strong as death. Ganon po siya katindi. Amen? It's jealousy and unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire. That means it says it cannot be stopped. 
whatever comes along the way, whether our difficulties, whether our inferiority, whether our own struggles and challenges in our lives, our past, our shame, it can never stop the love of God to envelop, to live within us. Not even death. Yan po ang sinasabi po dito. Not even death. Many waters cannot quench love in verse 7. Rivers cannot sweep it away. If one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it would be utterly scorned. It is not enough. We can never measure. We can never measure the love of God. It is beyond what we can imagine. It is beyond we expect. Sometimes the love of our husband, our wife, can fail. Our love as family can fail. Our loves as a friend can fail. Even in the marketplace. Kaya nga po madalas, nagkakaroon din po tayo ng hidwaan. We have misunderstanding even inside the house. There is fight, there is quarrel, but you are close. But this only see and shows us that our love as humans has a limit. Do you understand? But sometimes when we expect love from each other, dapat perfect. Yeah? And so that's why we always get disappointed. That's why we always get frustrated. But now we see here that in Songs of Solomon, there is only one love that will really perfect our love. And that is the seal of God. That is the fiery seal of the love of God. Marami pong nangyayari sa buhay po natin. That sometimes even our love to live life, minsan nawawala. Minsan nakikita din po natin sa, sa ating family. We were born in a family that is full of difficulties. We were born in a place where there's so much quarreling, there's so much pains and hurts. And sometimes it's not easy po sa atin na maniwala that, you know, true love exists. But God is saying to us, this love of God is something that is unquen unquenchable, unstoppable. So that, hindi na po natin kailangan ang iba. Like, we, we don't need to rely on the idols of the world. We don't need for the world to satisfy us. But how great and how powerful yung love ng groom sa bride. The love of God to us as the bride, as the church of God. That even if the world fails to fill that void, to fill that love in our lives, His love can do it. His love can do it. Kaya hindi na po natin kailangan to chase after the world. We don't need to to please the world, to say that we belong. Minsan, bilang mga Kristiyano, we are willing to compromise our stand and our faith because we want to belong to the world. We don't want to be different, but we want to do the same things that they do. Why? Because we fear that we will not belong. We want to be accepted. We want to be acceptable before men and before a group of people. Kaya minsan po, we change. And most of the time, we let go of the love of God sa atin. And we change our identity. We change our identity. We were just talking kanina sa sakyan. Kasi may isang artista na namatay. Hanggang we went to the topic of the lives of, of an artista is not easy. Because they live in the expectation of men. They live in the standard of men. Kaya dinecline ko din ang maging artista. Okay? Kasi, um, I, I'm filled with the love of God. <laughs> so, we, we were talking kanina, uh, coming here, that to live in their life is not easy. They're always in front to be scrutinized. They were always led. Ito dapat siya. They live according to expectation. So, they change their face. They change everything about them. They change their personality. They're not themselves. And it's not easy to find an artist na sila talaga, yun yun, nakikita natin. Because they always want to be accepted in the public. They always want to be acceptable 
in the standard of men, but no longer in the standard of God. And you know, even Christians, we don't need to be artista to do this. Many times in the church, we are okay. We feel we are holy and righteous. Paglabas po natin sa church, we have our different identity. We have our different way to live our lives. And minsan po, ito po yung nangyayari. Bakit? We try to put security in our hearts according po dun sa sasabihin ng tao. According po dun sa expectation ng tao. Even among husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriends, we try to please each other in a way po na nakakaroon ng twisted mindset among and between us as partners. Pero sinasabi po dito ng Songs of Solomon, we need this kind of love, an unquenchable love. It is a love that cannot be stopped by even human standard, by even the expectation of the world. But it's something that can pursue, it is committed, it can fight and win the battle for us. When we have the love of God, we can overcome everything. Amen? This unquenchable love of the Lord, kung ito po ay nasa atin, imagine that we can overcome anything. Even the insecurities, even the fear we have towards the world today. There is war everywhere. There are always bad news. Marami po tayong nakikita, you know, na, na negative things around us. The economy begin to crumble and many things fail. But you see, the love of God, if there is one thing that will not fail, it is this love of God. This is the unquenchable love of God that can consume everything, including our fears, including our insecurities in life. And we can overcome we can overcome through this fire seal ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon. And what's more, after receiving this love, after receiving this seal and the love that we have, sabi po dito in verse 8, we have a little sister and her breasts are not yet grown. What shall we do for our sister? On the day she is spoken for, is she... If she is a wall, we will build towers of silver on her. If she is a door, we will enclose her with panels of cedar. And the bride begins to say, I am a wall and my breasts are like towers. Young bride is no longer just looking at herself, nor just looking at the groom. What happens? The bride begins to consider her little sisters. Amen? May pumasok po dun sa sin. It's again, these little sisters. Amen? After the bride received the seal, the unquenchable love of God, yung, yung bride, hindi lang po nag-stay sa kanya yung love ng Panginoon. The love of God did not just remain in her. But yung love of God, the unquenchable love of the Lord, begin to overflow in her life. And she began to be concerned about others. She began to see the little sisters. And who are these little sisters? This bride, these Christians that are not matured enough yet. Maybe they are just new believers, two years in the Lord. They are just young. And the bride, the matured tree of life, begin to see them and care for them. The bride did not just rely on God as she sees the little sister. She also rise up and nurture. Nakikita niyo po ba yung love? This unquenchable love? The love of God doesn't just remain in one person. But like a fire, the love goes on and on. It moves forward. Ang fire po, it doesn't just remain in one place. Hindi dahil nagsunog ang bayan ng isang tao, hanggang dun lang ang sunog. No. It affects everything near her. Amen? That is how the fire works. And the same is true with the love na nareceive po ng bride. Yung love na, na, na binigay po ng painan sa kanya, it begins to overflow. And it did not just remain, but she begin to pass on 
the love. She begin to also affect others with that fire that comes from the love of God. And what happens? Sabi po niya dito, I am a wall. She's no longer just a bride. She's not just a wire bride. She's not just a tree of life bride. But she becomes a wall and a door. Amen? For the young, for the young brides, what does it mean po? The wall signifies protection. Amen? The wall signifies salvation. And the door, it signifies praise. Amen? It signifies praise. It begins, it opens door for the blessings to come. It opens door for the favor to come. When the door is open, the blessings does come. And you know, the bride begins to say, I am a wall and a door. Nag-transform. Did you see how great the transformation of the bride? Before, she's always so selfish. Self-centered. Oh, my groom, my groom, he is mine, I am yours. It's always about between the two of them, amen? But look at how the love of the bride matured. She's not just looking after herself, but she looks after others. Just like the Israelites were being tasked by God. In the beginning, the promise was only for the, the Israelites. Amen? In the beginning. But now God also began to raise them up to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Amen? They need to begin to sh share. And even in the time of this, a book of Solomon was written, it was a time when God wants to raise up the Israelites to lead the whole Israel towards God. And God wants them to have this kind of love. Those who experience the love of God needs to let the people, bring the people back to God. And the same thing that we as 611 people are also doing today. That's why we want to be a cell leader. Amen? Ako, wala pa lang may gusto maging cell leader dito, ha? <laughs> but we want. We want to. We responded. Just like Maricel said a while ago. She responded. To become a cell leader. And it's the same thing God also desires to attend. And even for myself. When I went and I came here in Manila, I don't intend to start a church. I don't intend to do anything about God. But as God calls me in my wilderness, and God raised me up, I am willing to respond in the love of God. And so now, we started the church. We started this church, and we follow God, but it doesn't end on us. When I experienced the love of God, nung time po that I was in my lowest point of my life, in the time I was rebelling against God, when I became, begin to question God in my life, and the Lord turned me around, I experienced that love. Just like the bride. In the beginning, she doesn't feel God. She doesn't see God. She hated God. But when I begin to experience the Lord in my life, that's where everything turned around. But the love that God has given in my life is not just for us. It's not just for me. It is not just enough that I begin to know him and his salvation towards life. But I have to tell it to others. I need to allow this fire, the love of God to flow and consume others, and to experience yung salvation ng Panginoon. And so we begin, we begin to be a door and a wall for many of you. And the cell leaders who rise up in the church, the leaders of the church, and we are willing to lay down our lives, we are willing to lay down everything, despite all the struggles. Yesterday, we had a meeting with the, sa mga leaders po sa, sa ministries. And it was Guess what? It was filled with tears. Because they begin to also share their struggles of work nila. They begin to struggle, to share, share their relationship. Yung struggle, yung iba sa namatayan. Yung iba, they were juggling jobs. They have two jobs. They almost, they don't have rest. Saturday, whole day, they are in the church. Sunday, whole day, they are in the church. 
The only rest they're supposed to have is weekend. But they spend all these weekends in the church. And even every night in their weekdays, they have to meet their cell group. And this is how. And minsan sa cell group pa nila, sinisin sila. In the cell group, we as even as cell members, we think like we are the ones only busy. But the, our cell leaders are not busy enough. But you know, they are also very busy. And so yesterday, some of them admitted that they were burned out. Some of them are very tired. And we cried together. Because it's not just one, one story, but many and almost many leaders' story. But alam niyo po ang one thing that encouraged us. It is the love that of God that sustains us. It is the strength that comes from the love of God. Now we know and we understand that God understood us. Many of them, they blame themselves. And they see themselves like their cell group fails, their ministry fails. Some of them do not even believe in themselves. Ate, I think I'm not the right person for this ministry and that. And we have all our foxes. We have all these things. But we do not allow all these things to stop us. We can rest. And we can trust. Because many of them, they were really so hard on themselves. They think they fail, but I see they excel. But sometimes we are so hard to ourselves. Na minsan po, tayo din mismo, yung nagdadala po, that the burden... Bringing po yung, yung sadness in our lives. We are so hard on ourselves. But we realized yesterday that we need to just rest in the presence of God. Trust that even if we cannot do everything, God is able. Some of them cannot meet their cell group, but they can only trust their cell group will remain. The cell group will have that fire for God. And this is something. We cannot do everything. And same is true in our relationship. We work so hard to maintain our relationship. Most of you have your own boyfriends and girlfriends. And we really make time for them. Really spend time, money, and effort, and time for them. Amen? But sometimes we are still so hard on ourselves. We feel it is not enough. But you see, the Bible is, is saying to us, we need to trust God. The love of God will rule over our lives. We will always be not enough. But if we enter dun po sa pagmamahal ng painon, we, if we only begin to care for each other, it is the love of God that will sustain us. It is the love of God that will sustain us and will raise us up to be that wall, to be that strong tower where they can lean on us too. Dati, we are the ones leaning. But now, na-promote po tayo. They also begin to lean on us. That means we become reliable. We become dependable. Kasi nag-mature na tayo eh. We, we broke through from our self-centeredness. Kung dati, we always look what others can give to us, what others say to us, what others will, how others please us. But now, we begin to do this for others. We begin to share the love, embrace them, lay down our lives for them. This is the bride. And so the bride grew stronger. And he be, she begins to say, I am a wall. I can have that strength to carry the burden. I have that strength to carry others' burden. Why? Because she received the seal of the love of God. Amen? And even in our lives, this is how God sees us. Why did the bride respond in a way that he has also, she has to begin to love others? Sabi po dito, Thus, I have become in his eyes, verse 10, B, I have become in his eyes like one bringing contentment. The way the groom sees the bride, because the bride matured, the bride becomes a vessel of contentment. Before, the bride is so discontented. Amen. 
She was always, oh, your love is not enough. You're gone when I need you. Palagi niyang kinakwestiyon yung pagmamahal ng groom. But this time, the wife becomes a contentment himself, herself. Because she received that contentment from God. She received that contentment dun po sa love ng Panginoon. And so she is not just a vessel of contentment, but she begins to influence others. And when people see her, they love to see her. They love to welcome her. They love to embrace her. Bakit? There's peace in her heart. There is peace, there is calmness in the heart of, of this bride. Because the bride knew that the love that she has is not just for her to consume or to use. Sabi po ng verse 11, Solomon had a vineyard in Baal Hamon. He let out his vineyard to tenants. Each was to bring for its fruit a thousand shekels of silver. But now, but my own vineyard is mine to give. The thousand shekels are for you, Solomon. And 200 are for those who tend its fruit. What does it mean? He knows, she knows, that as God has given her this love, this unquenchable seal of love, God also makes her accountable of the things that was given. Amen? And kailangan niya talagang is share yung love na ito because at the end times, God will ask us, what did we do about this seal? What did we do about this consuming seal, this love, this unquenchable love na bigay ng Panginoon sa atin? But the bride knew exactly that we have to give an account to God. Account to God. And this is the revelation Ito po yung revelation that brings us to the second point. is the revelation of the flame of fire. Ano po yung revelation doon? That the love of God in us should be revealed. That's why it's called revelation. It should be displayed. It should be shown. Just as God did not stop us or hindi po niya ipinagkait sa atin to understand this unquenchable love of God. He revealed it unto us. And just as God wants to show us this love, God also wants us to reveal it to the world. The means to display, the means to allow others to experience this. And once we do this, God says, sabi po niya dito in verse 12, God deserves the thousand shekels for the work, for Solomon, because Solomon is a metaphor for God and the bride is a metaphor for church. And sabi po dito, and 200 are for those who tend its fruit. What does it mean? When we learn to love others and walk in love, God is going to also reward us. God, when, when the world tells, bakit ka pa magiging mabait? Why love others? It's not easy. The wicked prosper anyway. If you don't care enough for people, you can do whatever you want. You can get whatever you want. This is what the world says. But what the Bible tells us, when we learn to walk in the love of God, when we work out that thousand shekels, we give it to the Lord. God gives us 200. God gives us people. God will reward us in what we do. Hindi po tayo kinakalimutan ng Panginoon. We receive the love of God and we shall also receive a reward. To love according to the love of God and not of the world is a blessed path. When we say it's a blessed path, it will not bring us to destruction because the world's love is full of measurement. It's full of calculations. It's full of limitations. But the love of God has no boundary. Have you ever experienced that when you love, even this person doesn't love you, you love them? You did? This is the kind of love God wants us. The strangers in the street, your seatmate in the workplace that hates you so much, your boss who is very irresonable, your parents 
Now maybe somehow we see them very irresponsible, maybe in our lives. Our partners that are undependable, can we love them? Can we love them? It's not easy for us to answer. Amen. Because in our lives, we have not been into that kind of point. But that is what God expects for his church. That we will rise up to carry this unquenchable love. That's why, why Marisol is crying. Kung siya lang, she have stopped doing her selfie. Many times she cries. Many times she comes to me and cry. Not because she blames the cell leaders, but she will always say, Ate, what's wrong about me? What's wrong with me? And many times these are the same stories that we have in life. When we fail, we condemn ourselves. We accuse ourselves. We cannot even love ourselves. But God is saying to us today, there's this unquenchable love that is able to love even the unlovable even our enemies. That's why we are willing to respond. That's why today we can be like a wall. We can be like a door for each one of us. Madalas po, they are unappreciated. You cannot appreciate walls and doors. Yeah? But they are there for a great purpose. To cover, to protect. And it's the same God wants us to receive as his bride today. It is the same is true when we want to stay in a happy and committed marriage. It's to lay down our lives, lay down our lives and receive that love from God. And we do that, verse 13 to 14, and brings us to the last point. Sabi po dito, you who dwell in the gardens with friends in attendance, let me hear your voice. Come away, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or like a young stag on the spice-laden mountains. At the end of the book of Solomon, we see yung closeness ng bride and groom. We see how they communicate, how they converse. And what happens? They become one. Nagkakaroon po ng communication. Nag-uusap po sila. So what happens when we walk in the love of God, God is able to speak in our lives. And God is able to hear us. God is able to also respond sa ating mga buhay and even in the things that we need. Even po sa ating mga cell group, even in our church, even in our ministry, when we learn to love our work, we learn to love even the unlovables at work, God will make a way, God will come in our very midst. You want to bring the presence of God in our lives? The many times you feel like, Lord, nasaan ka? Lord, why my relationship to my cell groups, to my, to my housemates, dito po sa aming family, it's like this, it's, you're not there. If we want the presence of God to come, allow the love of the Lord to reign in our hearts. But if we are full of hatred, we are full of unforgiveness, we are full of complaints, it is not easy for the presence of God to dwell among us. It is the love of God. Sabi po dito, if we are struggling in our relationship, we can just speak to God. And He will come to rescue us. He will come and listen. He will come. Minsan hindi po madali. It's not easy to love others. To be in a cell group, not everyone is excited to be a cell leader. Amen? Not everyone can sacrifice their time. Not everyone can sacrifice the time of rest, their time of leisure. Not everyone can sacrifice their money for people, for relationship. In the church, it's not easy. Not many churches go after relationship. Why? Relationships are very expensive. It is very laborious, very effortful. This is relationship. That's why many, especially po sa atin sa Metro Manila, we become indifferent with others. We don't care enough. We don't try 
kung merong, ayaw po nating makisangkot. If there is if there, there's a problem in this place, we don't want to get connected. Kung may problema, isang office mate natin, we don't care enough. We don't ask enough. We don't listen enough. We always want what we want. But in that way, we can never welcome God's presence to come and move and bless our relationship. If we want to be closer to God, let us be closer to one another. Make our best, make our every effort to try to mend things up with our, alam mo yun yung mga nakasalitan, sakitan po natin ng loob, to these people na ang hirap-hirap intindihin, when we learn to lay and surrender our lives, we, we mature as a tree of life. You will come to see miracle happen in your relationship. Miracle happens in our relationship. Once I was asked, because we're talking sa mga, about sa mga kapasawayan namin when we were young in the youth, and then they, they, they learned the, the, the stories, the, the hardship of raising up a youth ministry in the church. And I was asked one time, at the car, yeah, you said the church, we as a Christians, we as cell leaders must learn to love our cell members. Paano kung nagpapasaway? What if our cell leaders, are, you know, they just do whatever they want. They don't listen. If the love, if the world, if, if, if the Bible tells us to love them, don't you think we are only parang, we approve of what they're doing? And he, and he said, hindi ba pwedeng we give up on them? And, and he asked me, when will we give up on men? Because I tell them the stories of how not easy to pastor people. They will turn their backs to you. They will, they will not appreciate what you do. They will not see you. They will also stab you in the back. But when as a cell leader, as a pastor, when do we stop loving people? When do we give up on them? Do you know the answer? The answer is we never do that. We will never give up on men unless they give up on us. Even in the cell group, yes, may matitigas ulo tayong mga cell members. But as long as they are there, they come to your cell group, we embrace them. The only time we cannot love them is then when they leave. As long as they are there, no matter who they are, no matter how hard, no matter how rebellious they are, we never give up on loving them. We love them the same, just like how God also loves us. And you know, sa aking buhay, how God loves me, it's not because Ate Kar is a holy person. It's, it's not because I do what God wants me to do. It's not because I'm very righteous. But you know my story. I have a lot of shortcomings. I have a lot of sin. I have a lot of own struggles in my life. And many times I turned away from my full-time calling. But still I'm here. Why? It's not because of me. It's not because I am committed. But God is committed in me. That's why I can I can still have the confidence. I remember the first time I went back in the full time but tumalikod na po ako noon in the full time ministry. And then Pastor Danny asked me, come, come to Tugigara. And he accepted me, he embraced me again, he reinstated me as a full time staff. It was not easy to go back to serve. Why? Because you are full of shame. You, you are full of self-condemnation, self-accusation. I'm not worthy enough. Why am I doing here? I don't deserve the grace. And there's so many things. And the lines of the enemy will attack you. Why are you doing here? You will again go. You will leave the full-time ministry once again. And it's not easy to stand back up again. But what made me remain and stand strong it is the love of Pastor Danny. His love for me did not change 
I knew it was not easy for him to be in the ministry. At iniwan namin lahat siya. But I saw the love of a father. He doesn't care what I did. He doesn't care how I left him behind. But all he cares was how was how I was in the healing journey of my heart. Because I lost my mom. I lost my job. I don't have anything. I have to start again. But he cares for me throughout that journey to restore me. To restore my identity. To restore, to restore yung desire ko to serve God once again. He walked with me. Many times I failed but the love of God the love of my leader never fails to be there sa akin. And it's the same thing we do today. We now begin to be a mother. I'm no longer just a child who always longs for what my pastor gives me. I begin to be a pastor. I begin to be called to also become walls and doors for others. And it's not because I can do it. But it is because of the love of God. The unquenchable love of God that stops, that breaks and consumes every failure, every weakness I have. Especially my inability, my complaints, my unrighteousness, my unholiness. It's the love of God that persists till the end. That's why today I can stand. And we can all stand. Amen. Today, as we come in the presence of God, let us just come in confidence with the Word of God. Today, God is saying to us, He loves us. He loves us from the beginning until the end. He seals us with its seal. It's a fiery seal. It is a seal that comes with a fire that cannot quench cannot be quenched by anything the pressures of the world the mindset of the world the stress that we have in our relationship our fears of our future today God wants us to understand whether in our relationship with men relationship with him relationship towards our work let the love that seal that fiery seal of god's love to consume all our fears to consume all our insecurities in our lives today i can really sense the love of god is among us the love of god is here is a fire that blows in this room. It comes with the fire and the wind. We may have been callous of the things in the past that we have. We have received so much from this world that confused us what true love is that confuses of our identity many times we work so hard just to gain love acceptance belongingness we work so hard to feel appreciated by our parents we try to achieve and run after many things of the world to just say to ourselves, we are good enough to be loved. To be acceptable before men and before God and even before ourselves. Some of us here, we have lived a very difficult life trying to prove ourselves. Maybe when we were young in the family, we've been compared. We may have not received love enough. We must 
maybe we have to compete for the affection, for the attention of our parents. And so even when we grow up, we compete. We compete for the sake of love. We work so hard for the sake of love. But God sees you. The Lord says, I watch over you in the apple tree. Even when you were being born, when you are in the womb of your mom, when you have nothing to boast about, the eyes of God is among you. The eyes of God is focused on you. And God is saying to you today, you are precious. You are precious in His eyes. You are perfect. You are perfect in the eyes of God. Today, I just want you to feel that love. To open your hearts to the Lord. And to receive that love. Consume all the past consume all the trauma all the fears today maybe it's not easy for us to see God we come to church we worship God but we felt a Christian life is so ordinary we cannot experience that first hand blow and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we question, Lord, where are you? You want to see God? You want to experience God? But many times we fail. We fail to see it. We fail to feel it. Not because the love of God is not with us. But many times it's because we look for God in the wrong places in our lives. We're looking for that love that we expect from God from the wrong places in our lives. But what does God say? Do we want to attract God in our lives? Or we just allow every day to pass by? It is okay. I don't feel God. It's okay. But today, let the love of God fill us to have that inner desire to believe that His love is real. Would you pursue me, God? God, you pursue me with power and glory. Stop a
today God is saying to each one of us, His love is real, His love is true, His love is unfailing. The world will fail and the world will crumble. Even men will fail. Their love, our love will fail. But the love of God remains from beginning till the end. It stays forever. It is the love that consumes all things. It consumes the shame, the pain, the sins. It is as strong as death, as strong as the grave. And the best thing is that it's greater. It is greater than death, greater than the grave. Today, brothers and sisters, is the first Sunday we're taking this time to take the Holy Communion. If maybe in our lives we are doubting the love of God or we are doubting if true love exists in this world. The blood of Jesus and the body that was torn in the cross is a seal. It is one of the seal. It is an assurance of this great and unquenchable love of God. Despite the sin of men, despite our weakness, God died for us in the cross. Jesus willingly gave his life. Jesus willingly walk the path of death to be scorned to be mocked to suffer in the cross and to suffer shame in all ways in the hands of just men in the hands of a sinful man but this is the love of God Without anything in return, God wants us to receive it. God just wants us to receive this love. And as we take this Holy Communion, let us be reminded and reflect on the love of God for us. If we think we have not seen God, if we are not feeling God, this in the past few days and years of our life let his blood and his body remind us of this unquenchable love that he has his body torn for us born all the pains sickness and diseases so that today we can receive that healing in our bodies. The healing caused by our sins. God was torn so that we be made whole once again in Him. And we remember His blood shed for each one of us. That all blood was gone. But every drop is a very treasured thing that every drop caused a million of life because millions of life today the death that he made resurrected us the death he made is to be an eternal reminder the sacrifice what kind of love Jesus can go through for the sake of his love for us. Brothers and sisters, I want you to look at me. Jesus at the night before he was betrayed, he took up the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and he said, this is my body, broken for you. It is a remembrance of me. After which, he took up the cup and says, this is the cup of the new covenant 
that in this cup, it comes with the new promise of life. We are no longer born of sin. We are no longer a slave of our past. We are no longer a slave of our fears. We are no longer slaves of our failures, of our difficulties. But God has given us the seal of victory in His blood. He has taken and washed away all the difficulties, all the hardship and sufferings of men. Jesus has done it all. So that today we can receive the fullness of life. Let us all take this. Father, we thank you for the love. We know that you paid the price. You paid the high price. And you said that no one is greater than his master. As you have exemplified that kind of love, as we have taken your blood and your body, we believe that we are one with you and we are one with the desires that you have given for us. The calling and the vision that you have given us. That before you left, you said, go and make disciples. That we can become not just a bride, but we become the bride that can become a wall for others. That can become a door of blessing for others. Father, today I pray that may you take away all our unbelief, our doubts, our inferiorities, all our, our calculations, all our rationality, all our measurement, all our limitations, all our judgment towards men. Just like you did not judge us according to who we are, but you have embraced us. Father, today I pray that may you heal our hearts so that we can overcome Heal us, Father, from all the pains in life that we can overcome, that we can rise up and break through above our difficulties, break through about our fears, all our distrust towards men, all the hurts that we have received from men. Lord God, today, the love that you have given us is greater than the pains that we have received because this is your love. It's greater than death and it's greater than the grave. And it cannot be overcome by any words and lies of the enemy. And so today, I pray that this love will flow in this room. Fill every vessel. Fill every vessel. Today, if you want to respond to the love of God, to become that wall, to become that door. I want you to lift your hands and just say to the Lord, yes, God, I am willing to lay down all my pains, to lay down my selfishness, my self-centeredness, and I want to care for my little sisters. I want to care for strangers. I want to care for those who cannot give back to me. Lord, I want to care. I want this love, desire this love, Father. Not because I am able, but because you give us the capacity. And Lord God, I pray today for everyone, every hand being raised. Lord, may you transform our hearts and transform how we see things in life. That we will begin to see according to your eyes. We begin to love, Panginoon, without any measurement we can love selflessly we can lay down ourselves and our weakness lord enlarge our spiritual capacity to accept people to release forgiveness to embrace people we begin to raise them up to raise them up that god as we come before you as you see us stand as a wall we become a contentment for others and we become a joy for you that we can please you father as we bear each other as we care for each other as we choose the path of love and grace towards each other lord we can come to please you we can come to glorify you 
so that your presence will come among us. Your presence will come among our relationships and our workplace. And Father, you promise that whoever will become this wall and this door, you will reward them. You will bless them. And so, Lord God, I pray for every cell leaders in this room. Lord, reward them of all the sacrifice and the love they have given for their children. I pray for every parent who carry their children and their family today. Lord, enlarge their capacity to carry the role that you have given them. Even the burden for their finance. Even burden for their relationship. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I release the blessing to flow in their lives. And each one of us, as we are willing, Lord, to be raised up. To be that vessel of love. For the whole world to see that your church can be depended upon. That they can rely to your church. They can lean on to your church. They can run to us. They can depend on us, Father. Because we are dependent on you. We trust you, Father, that you can raise us up. And Father, I release this blessing to every hands lifted up. And that more than how they have given, Lord, the past and today and in the future, Lord, I pray that you return to them a thousandfold and break through, Panginoon, making sa mga cell leaders, cell members, let their children rise up, let their next generation rise up and rule even in their family. Father, I thank you. And God, receive every life, receive every offering, Panginoon, na meron po kami. Thank you for changing us. Thank you for transforming us. Thank you for allowing us, Lord, to take part in this vision. And that God, we know beginning today, we can connect. We can interact with you. Even in our difficulties, Panginoon, sa pagiging magulang, in our difficulties as a Christian, Father, we know that you know better than us. You see us and you want to respond in our lives. And so, Lord God, here we are and we are willing. Lead us to you, Father. Allow us, God, to respond in your love. And as we seal the end of this series, Lord, I release the anointing of all this series to become a warrior bride, to be a seeking bride, to be a tree of life bride, to come and be seen in their lives so that God, we will really triumph over all things and that as we stand before you, God, we will stand approved. We will be stand approved. Father, I thank you. And God, we just want to give you praise. We give you glory. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mari po ba natin sabihin? And can we say it to our seatmates? Let us together be a wall. A wall and a door. It doesn't matter if we can speak. It doesn't matter if we know how to love people. We can lead others. But as we respond, God will make us able. Amen. God bless you.